I tell people that I'm a posture coach, they tend to get pretty self-conscious. They start shifting around and they're not really sure what they're supposed to do with their bodies. And then eventually they end up settling on a position that looks a little something like this. <laughs> but the second I look away, they go back to looking like this. And that's because we all look like this. We spend a lot of time rounding our backs and craning our heads towards screens. Even our toddlers look like this. But the problem is that this kind of posture leads to chronic back pain. Now, I know it's easy to blame all of this on the screens around us, but it's really not a new problem. Over a hundred years ago, doctors were warning us about this very issue. They said that the decline of American posture would lead to an epidemic of back pain. And as a result of these warnings, there was a massive campaign to prevent bad posture in children. It was the single largest national public health policy that you've never heard of. At the turn of the century, every, every public school in America taught reading, writing, arithmetic, and posture. And students received posture evaluations every single week. The program was created by many of the same people who created the physical education movement. And so that meant that kids who failed their posture tests received special corrective exercises to do during PE class. It was physical therapy, but the problems were being addressed before the child developed chronic pain. This photo is from a 1913 textbook. And it shows a chin tuck exercise that's very similar to something that a modern physical therapist might prescribe for forward head posture. This is so common now that it's recently been nicknamed eye posture. But a hundred years ago, kids were doing stretches and exercises that were specifically designed to prevent the kinds of problems that we're seeing today. This was once considered one of the most important tasks of the public school system, and they were ingenious about it. Kids were doing exercises at their desks <laughs> to prevent bad posture. So this little guy is demonstrating good and bad form for doing those sit-ups at your desk. Pretty ingenious. <laughs> And it wasn't just that they did a bunch of stretches and exercises. Kids were taught about body mechanics and ergonomics. They all knew the right and wrong way to sit in a chair. And the schools made sure that they had desks that fit them properly because everybody knew that if a desk was too big or too small, that the child would develop severe posture problems. And they talked about things that we don't even think about today, like the proper positioning of your shoulder blades, which is flat against your rib cage and not winged out like in this photo here, because winged shoulder blades are a sign that your shoulders are rolled forward. They talked about how habits like holding your hands in your pockets could set off a chain reaction of bad posture all the way up through your whole body. Children were taught to evenly distribute the weight of their school books between both arms. And that's because they didn't want their growing bodies to develop any imbalances. As part of those weekly posture tests, kids were drilled on everyday activities like walking up and down stairs. As a result of all of this, kids understood how to take care of their bodies. The public school system was very enthusiastic about this mission. It all started back when school became mandatory for all children. It's hard to imagine now, but back when states first started passing laws requiring kids to attend school, it was incredibly controversial. Parents were outraged that the government would require their children to do something as unhealthy as sit behind a desk for six hours a day. And that's why the public school system took on the responsibility of making chronic sitting as safe as possible. 
But by about the mid-1960s, the posture movement had lost its battle against popular culture. It had been a battle ever since the 1920s because that's when the flapper generation first made slouching fashionable. And it's an attitude that still persists today. Just open up any magazine or look at any album cover. And so now the idea that we should teach posture to our kids has just kind of faded away. But the problems that they were worried about then are even worse today. So I decided to see if some of these old fashioned lessons could help my kids. Can you guess which one is my daughter? <laughs> and I just want to point out that she's not sitting like this because I nagged at her. She's sitting like this because it's a habit. It turns out that kids really enjoy learning about their bodies. And the more you teach them, the more interested they become in their own health. But if you just nag at them and say, come on, sit up straight, nothing will change. It's kind of the same thing as saying, come on, just be better at basketball, <laughs> right? I mean, you can nag at them all you want, but if they don't receive any coaching and they never practice, then it won't make any difference. And when it comes to posture, just a tiny bit of guidance can really go a long way. Just look at the difference that it made when I lifted my daughter's iPad off of her lap and put it up onto the table. Now she's not tempted to fold forward toward the screen. Now, of course, sometimes she does need to look down at things. And when she does, she knows how to do it without collapsing forward. And that's because it's something we practiced. We played a little game. We saw who could nod their head without letting their ears move through space. In other words, I was teaching her that when she looked down, she should imagine that her ears are the fulcrum of the movement and that her head is pivoting around them. It's a small little thing, but it helps protect her against that forward head posture that we were talking about before. Now, not everything is this simple and straightforward, and that's mostly because it seems like the whole world is designed to ruin her posture. <laughs> I recently went to her second grade back to school night and saw chairs like this in the classroom. Now, I'm sure that the teachers and administrators didn't know about it, but chairs like this are terrible for growing bodies. A bucket seat pushes your pelvis into a tucked position. It puts all of your weight on your tailbone, makes your whole spine round, and then to top it all off, it pushes you into a forward head position. When you're sitting up, your bones can do the job of holding you up and your muscles can relax. And that's the secret. Healthy posture is about relaxation. The second you collapse forward, the muscles in your back are working overtime just to hold up your head. Not to mention the fact that you're also hanging on your ligaments. That puts an incredible amount of unnecessary wear and tear on your body. But the good news is that sitting properly isn't that difficult once you know how to do it. So I have a simple little trick. It's easy even for very young children to remember. All you do is when you sit down, you lean forward, you scooch your bottom back as far as it'll go, and then you simply sit up and relax. And I hear the sound of a few scooching bottoms out there. <laughs> it might feel a little funny at first, but once you get used to it, I think you'll find that it's a lot more comfortable. These are simple life hacks that every child should know. Because right now, our kids have absolutely no idea how to protect their bodies in the age of screen time. They're setting themselves up for a lifetime of chronic pain, and they don't even know it. But it's preventable, and we don't even need to reinvent the wheel. All we need to do is put a modern twist on some old-fashioned wisdom. Thank you.